U.S. producer price inflation declined by more than expected in October, but what does that actually mean? If we take a look at this chart from Bloomberg, we can see that it looks like inflation for producer prices has been coming down. And so we see both the gray bars, which are excluding food and energy, and then the red line, which is the inclusion of food and energy. I always have to point this out. The reason why you have core inflation readings and then the the broader basket of inflation readings when they exclude food and energy to get that core reading. The only reason for that is because not because food and energy are volatile. It's because food and energy are necessary. These are literally the last things that people will give up. They'll stop buying handbags. They'll stop buying cars. They'll stop buying everything before they stop buying food and energy. People will stop paying for their mortgage, their car payment, everything. These are the last things that people keep on paying for that's at the very foundation of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And so when you're trying to get away with reading a lower inflation number, you're gonna say, hey, we don't wanna look at food and energy because those are gonna be the most accurate in terms of showing the price inflation because nobody is giving those up. When you have things that people give up buying when they get too expensive, well, the inflation readings are going to look better for those because the prices had to stop going up once people stopped buying them because they got too expensive. But food and energy are the things with inelastic demand. And so those prices will continue to go up. Have you ever wished that you could earn real gold and silver by spending your fiat trash? Well, now you can with the new bullion card from Atmex and One gold. The bullion card is the industry's first precious metals reward credit card. This is very different than all those debit cards out there that force you to violate Gresham's law by stacking gold and silver, then selling it in order to spend more fiat. The bullion card is different. It is a credit card that you use just like any other credit card. It allows you to spend your fiat, meanwhile earning gold and silver. On all purchases, you earn 1% back in gold and silver. If you apply through AppMex, these store up in points you can use to purchase gold and silver. And if you apply through one gold, it allows you to automatically convert those points into segregated, allocated gold and silver. And then at any time, request physical delivery through AppMex. This card has no annual fee, an introductory 0% APR, and your points never expire. This card is a game changer because it allows you to spend the fiat currency you are already going to be spending anyway, just as you were going to. And instead of stacking up those airline miles that you never use, and instead of using those measly points for cash back, no, you get to stack real sound money, gold and silver physically in allocated segregated accounts or use it for purchasing direct physical precious metals from Atmex. And just like any credit card, it comes with many of the benefits that all credit cards offer. Pause here if you'd like to read more. I have both the Atmex version and the One Gold version linked in the description below. Anyway, take a look at this chart. We can see that the core PPI is at 6.7%. The full basket of PPI is at 8%. It peaked out earlier this year at about 11.5% here, now down to eight. Now, the other thing to note about this is broadly speaking, this is still disinflation. This is not deflation. So we see the numbers are coming down here, but it's still a positive number. So I always like to use the analogy of a car driving forward. If a car is moving forward, that represents prices going up. The number that things are costing, the dollar amount that things cost is still going up. The car is moving forward in distance, it is going forward. Now, if the car is going 65 miles an hour and then now it's going 55 miles an hour, that means the pace at which the car is moving forward is going down, but the car is still moving forward. So with prices right now, the rate at which prices are increasing is decreasing. So year over year, when you compare prices this year to prices last year, that is 8% higher. That means prices are still higher. They're just not growing at the same pace they were earlier this year. So this is what people call disinflation. It's where prices are still going up, but the pace at which the prices are going up is declining. And disinflation is widely regarded as a precursor to deflation because if the disinflation continues, 
for a certain amount of time, then eventually you get to the point where the prices stop going up. And if that trend continues, then the prices will actually start to fall. Now, if we dive into the details just a little bit, we can see that for certain things, prices actually have started to fall. When we look at the cost of processed goods for intermediate demand, those prices fell. Excluding food and energy, the cost slumped 0.8%. And this reflects prices earlier in the production pipeline. Now, as you know, inflation is a monetary phenomenon. When the money supply increases, all else being equal, prices will increase. When the money supply doesn't increase, all else being equal, there's no mechanism for sustained price increases. Now, certainly there are some things that could get more expensive and other things that could get cheaper. But if we look at this, like the entire world is a closed economy right? There's no outside commerce and outside money coming in and out. So this is like a giant complex game of Monopoly. If in the game of Monopoly, there's no banker and you only have the people playing the game and the money that they have, there's no mechanism for prices of properties to continue to go up. Eventually, that would force somebody to go bankrupt and the same amount of money would be being used to bid back and forth between properties. Equilibrium would be reached at some point and there would be some price changes, but on average, there would be no way for prices to continually increase for that price increase to be sustained because there's not enough money going around to continually support those higher prices. The only way for prices to continue to go up is if the money supply continues to go up. There is a lag here and prices do not respond immediately. This is why, as I always point out, when the money supply increased at the beginning of 2022, goods and services didn't have inflation for almost a year. And now if we take a look at the money supply, we see that for this entire year, the money supply has basically moved sideways in accordance with the Federal Reserve getting tighter. This means that the price rises have to stop. There's no mechanism by which the broad basket of prices can continue to go up. Will there be certain things that continue to get expensive? Absolutely. There will also be other things that start to crash. And this is why we are seeing people from the Federal Reserve now talk about how it might be appropriate soon to move to a slower pace of rate hikes. So instead of continuing with these 0.75% increases, they'll probably move back down to a 0.5% increase and then a 0.25% increase. And they may even slow the pace at which they let assets bleed off of their balance sheet, which as you can see here, now that time has gone by, there is a definite curve forming. Most people, when I started talking at the beginning of this year about believing the Fed that they were actually going to tighten, that they'd actually let the size of their balance sheet decline, a lot of people didn't believe me. They said the Fed could never do that. The math didn't support it, that there's no way they could ever do it. There's no way they could ever tighten because you can't taper a Ponzi scheme. And even I, for a long time, said those same things. But it's important to not base our decisions off of what we wish to be true, but to continually analyze our beliefs and our wishes and our hopes against what reality shows us is true and make our decisions according with reality. Otherwise, we're gonna be screwing up and we're gonna pay dearly for it. Which is why when you look at things like gold over the last few weeks, silver over the last few weeks, the stock market over the last few weeks, and even yields over the past few weeks. The market is starting to anticipate the Federal Reserve stopping its tightening because monetary policy takes about a year to hit the overall economy. Now, all that tightening they've done for almost a year now is starting to hit the economy. Inflation is starting to slow down by many measures. We're starting to see joblessness. We're starting to see unemployment. We're starting to see the consumer pinched, which means that the end of tightening might be sooner than most people expect now that everybody has gotten used to tightening and thinking it will never end. Now, does that mean that I think that the pain is over? No, but it does mean that we might be closer to the end than many people anticipate. As always, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.